Hello, everybody. We are back with another video, another critique in my ever present quest to perfect cheap content. <laughs> cheap and easy crap. Well, I, I shouldn't say that. Um, I decided to record my face today because everyone who subscribes to my channel already sees me on Break the Rules. So it's like, I don't know why I have had a taboo over it. So I'm going to do something. And please, if you like, like, share, subscribe. There is a PayPal link. But, you know, whatever you think is fair to quote Hank Hill. Uh, if you want more totally shameless, cheap, and easy content. So we're going to explore today. Well, actually, tonight for me. But whenever you're watching this, the world of... <laughs> can't believe I'm doing this. I'm trying, okay. We're going to explore some Generation Z artists, some Zoomers, and also some recent MFA grads who are aging millennials. So it's gonna be, it's gonna be quite the wild ride, okay. Um, <laughs> I'll try to be fair, I'll try to be nice. Some of this stuff is shocking especially for people who aren't used to it. But let's get on to it. I'll try to be serious. Screen share. Oh, here we go. I like how Zoom, uh, let's put this anywhere. I'll just put this up here. All right. <laughs> right off the bat, we all, we all know, we get the vibe of where this is going, by the way. Um, it's going to be, a lot of woke signaling, put it that way. 10 Gen Z artists around the world offering a look inside their art practices. And of course we have uh, Artsy is like the number one, like clearing one of the, like the clearing house of like contemporary art. There's like art net, uh, wide walls, you know. Oh God. <sighs> so right off the bat, you know, this is gonna be good. I mean, some of this stuff actually is quite good. Um, so let's, I guess you could say this video is a read along. Generation Z cannot be flattened into a single simple category, unlike millennials. Despite the public perception of a group of social media obsessed and ego driven young people born between 1997 and 2015, 2000, they, they extended to 2015. Oh man. All my cousins are older than me, except for like one, and they're like Gen Xers, and they have kids like that are young, that are born around that time. Well, I mean, most of them. What's often dismissed is the way that the world altering events and technological advancements have imp impacted their lives. Gen Z grew up uh, in the post 9-11 internet age. Mm, they, they were fully immersed into it. Unlike us millennials where, the, well, the older millennials, I'm considered a core millennial, where they're sort of like on the cusp between um, that reality, like that world. And, and now, uh, but Gen Z, they're fully, they're fully digitalized. Their being has been immersed in hyper reality since the time they were born. Their young adult Hakun says with the decentralization of information, more accessible education, <laughs> the erosion of fact-based knowledge. Yeah. Well, and the need to confront our damaged and dying planet from an early age, the I'm surprised they just didn't include, maybe that word is like too millennial. They didn't include Anthropocene, Anthropocene into it, the ego scene or whatever. Um, I think like the erosion of fact-based knowledge, FYI, Artnet, we never had that to begin with because um, media orientated being inevitably um led to the erosion of information because if you take what was traditionally a uni media entity which is for example television which i remember this one quote from oz it was an augustus dialogue who is the prisoner that would give a dialogue before each episode and like during he said like actually it wasn't him it was the dead um uh he was he was the former head of the the italians He's like the, he's going around the room and he's, you know, they whacked him. Right. And, uh, he's like, you know, television, it's like a one-way conversation and everyone's tuned in. 
and it was really pressing because like that was in the early 2000s when this was like hypermedia was just kicking off but it's true as soon as you have more of a polyvocal information channel like the internet where you can absorb media but you can also respond you it's not just like writing a letter into the editor into the broadcast uh, news person <laughs> that they probably never read it's more of like now you can at your favorite or least favorite um celebritard or journalist on twitter right i mean so the fact-based knowledge thing was always a joke to begin with but that's neither here nor there Confronter damage and dying planet. Yeah, I mean, the, what, what you're going to see in this article and the next one I want to read, which is about MFA grads and what they have to say, it's basically, there are some kernels of wisdom, there are some good things, but there's a lot of like woke signaling, obviously. Um, uh, this This is actually not too bad. I mean, I'm noticing a lot, like there's a conscious... Um, I'm sounding a bit controversial here. There's a conscious push in the professional art world to have like POC artists be as like androgynous and LGBT friendly as possible. Let's just clear the air. Like this is what you're going to see throughout this whole thing. You'll, you'll see what I mean. Um, Trent Thomas. Oops. So, th I mean, th photograph as art has always had a bit of like irony and free play and so forth um not awake just growing by Segni Ralkov. it's all right i mean this is probably the most kitschy out of all of them that you're going to witness here um but i i don't um there's not a lot of color field but i get the point but it's not my cup of tea um it's just too like the 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 blue shades, the muted hues. I, I get it, but it's not me. Uh, but here's where they really have to... Now the, the millennial is sort of been shuffled off of the cultural stage. Now it's just pure <laughs> Gen Z worship. Gen Z is the re they're the revolutionaries that the boomers wanted unconsciously, but yet millennials couldn't make the cut. They couldn't hack it, right? When it so we're just fail sons and fail daughters. When it comes to visual arts of Gen Z, visual artists of Gen Z, well, they might share characteristics with their older peers, addressing issues of identity, cultural taboos, sexuality, social and political unrest. The specific context in which they m matured, well, that's debatable, distinguishes them from their forebears. Yeah, maybe because they're immersed within this like information network that bombards them with messaging and gives them an ability to like LARP a past that they've dragged into the present through activist art. But we'll see, we'll see what I mean. So um, below is share insights from 10 Gen Z artists who hail from across the world. Their intention is not to paint a portrait of what Gen Z artists are like, rather we offer glimpses in the practice, motivations, values of young artists, blah, blah, blah. Uh, like affinities for color blue and post-production editing. When asked about the challenges they face as young artists, most say the lack of respect for their practices and double-edged sword of social media. Ooh, wow. Hmm. Despite, yeah, but when when has any artist, young artist, been ever been respected? You're just a young, you know, you got to pay your dues. Despite launching their careers under undeniably challenging and unpredictable circumstances, the Gen Z artists have hope for the future. <laughs> hope for the future. Well, maybe because the ever eternal and consuming present conforms or is various like regimes of truth enforce a social consensus that conforms to what they think is right and righteous, but yet you'll see them having to like LARP the opposite. Um, the Gen Z artists here is uh, hope of the future by cultivating supportive communities, engaging in dialogue through art making. Yeah. Yeah. You know, all the platitudes like engaging in dialogue. Um, so, uh, I'm not going to pronounce this right. Shaquille Solanke, um, printmaker and artist. This is actually pretty good act. This is, I, I, I think this is, I want to say it's some kind, this is probably, a, this is too clean to be a straight up drawing. I'm guessing this is probably an etching of some sort. South African artist, uh, creates works that is informed by South African heritage and identity as a 
queer brown man. <sighs> you know, well, I I told you. He's deeply personal, blue-hued painting and prints convey expressions of heartbreak, pain, and vulnerability. My work primarily explores the many dynamics of uh, queer intimacy. Hold in the space. I mean, this, th these are themes that have been going on, like, you know, since the 80s. But, I mean, there is artistic, there is a lot of skill involved here. And um, when it comes to printmaking, I'm more of a fan of straight up black and white. But this is, um, he's doing it pretty well. Vulnerability, my work primarily explores the dynamics uh, held in space of a secret garden, visual exploration of uh, the dualities of tenderness, desire, and violence. Hmm. Dualities of tenderness and violence within uh, certain forms of sexuality. Uh, I, well, I mean, this is old. This is like, I mean, Francis Bacon covered this, right? Um, the notions of this enclosure is central to my work pertaining to an internal allegorical world where one's most veiled vulnerabilities converge. I under, like, I think that um, there is a great tradition of the landscape. Okay, like political prejudices aside, there is a great um, tradition of landscape art that is um, through the sort of pastoral setting of the landscape, especially the gardenscape, there is always those questions of a liminality between peoples and classes. So like heterotopias, for instance, like public gardens, but also they become the counter of that. They become deeply personal. They become pastoral in a way, the way that 19th century, the 17th, 18th century landscape paintings, uh, stuff that Cl Kenneth Clark covered, like Gainsborough's landscapes always had like, the madam of the manor always had the, the sort of family. But here uh, we have sort of the enclosure of intimacy within like something that is directly opposed or rather um, extrinsic to the sort of bourgeois aristocratic pastoral landscape. Here is the landscape is the center for queer identity. And it's done really well. I mean, just from an objective intellectual standpoint, it's, uh, I admire, like, I don't, <laughs> I'm getting better at those details myself in printmaking, but, um, with etching, especially like with pe plexiglass or copper etching, it's a bit different. Um, you can pay more attention to the details and the, these ones, uh, these, um, let me actually look at this gouache on paper. Like he's, he's infusing a lot of different, um, arrange, like, a, Iranian miniature and Islamic art as well. Of course, uh, in South Africa, there was always um, Indian and Islamic influences and so forth. Uh, this one is directly this like weird amalgamation. Um, you're also a monster of so my which can I, I mean, I wish he didn't have the pretentious titles, but this one is pretty good. It's got um, a lot of the Arabian Iranian miniature artwork. Uh, it's got, it's got a nice attention to detail, and it's it's sort. I mean, it's it's monocolor, but then a lot of the Iranian miniatures were a lot of the tile work from that region, especially was, um, especially the blues were the most prized, especially when you can get them in different hues with copper tones and so forth. Um, but is this one a print? I'm pretty sure this one's a print. I could be wrong. Yeah. Oh, silk screen. Okay. So then, yeah, I mean, silk screen is quite difficult to get that level of detail. Um, moving on, moving on, connecting with his audience in such a personal level is vulnerable undertaking for Solanke. Um, vulnerability. I mean, the gen, oh God, as much as I'm praising this guy, it's like the, the vulnerability thing among zoomers. I mean, especially like millennials, we, the, the zoomer is a more, heightened reified version of a millennial and uh, we started this with vulnerability as the sign of authenticity um which i have problems with i i question i mean as someone who likes to think of myself you know shocker um actually no unironically like this probably is shocking to people um i do have certain vulnerabilities obviously i mean uh but like to wear it as a garb of authenticity is sort of um and th this is <laughs> i like this quote um, very different push for vol via validation of diverse individuals' vulnerabilities. 
wow, this guy actually has a lot of self-awareness. I think we're starting off with a good one. Um, power is found in the assertion of oneself via the art of practice. Pertinent discussions of gender, race, sexuality are thereby always out, for, out of the force. At the fore, given this, he's connected over. He's concerned over whether powerful figures in commercial art spaces are interested in young artist works, or if they only view art, queer, and or color, which historically has been excluded from the space as commodities to further their own financial. Based, based, and red pilled point. I I salute you. I take my my cap off to you to Solanki. I think what you're saying, and the fact that you are from South Africa, probably means that you've well not only experienced actual i mean that's also a part of the di the dialectic of like woke capital is do you commodify actual oppression experiences of racial prejudice and so forth because i think what i meant is that what i was going to say is that um the fact that you are from outside of the quote unquote west proper although that's debatable, but <laughs> depending on what answer you say, then it's like, yeah, well, whatever. I'm not going to get into it, but let's just say for argument's sake, outside of the West, traditionally, um, you're given a freedom to sort of question the motivations of these galleries and dealers and the art world, the prof the, the ka, the contemporary art world at large. You're given that space of freedom to say, the, like, which is an obvious glaring to critique to anyone who like has half a brain, but who has to like, um, who said that famous quote um, about people like when they're, when basically they're not going to say truth when their job, like basically their livelihood depends on saying untruth. Um, overall, Solanke's maintains a positive outlook, contemporary art, uh, having each other. Okay, so I'm trying to like go through these. Beatrice, Dolph, Melbourne, Man, that's a that's a dour Anglo face. Um, th this almost reminds me of uh, is it Agnes Martin? Um, du Domus, shaped by your upbringings in Polish family, Beatrice. Oh, I'm sorry, I was wrong about the Anglo thing. Um, values st storytelling incorporates myths, traditions, rituals into her practice. Um, I like that. I mean, I could tell that there's a folklorish vibe. There's like an outsider art. Um like the later like post -imp post impressionist expressionist stuff as a teen Dolph started out in illustration through after visiting a dig oh so i i can see yeah dig i was right post impressionism her current impressionistic style i'm not the biggest fan of Dega, but that was the first time i remember seeing paintings that i wonder why you, you, i mean you're probably a you're an accolade of Dega, but you just have to say that because it's not politically correct to say that you like Dega. Um, I remember seeing pings that moved me in that way I did. Friday afternoon eating two minute noodles. There's a lot, like, I mean, like the problem I noticed with a lot of Zoomer, I mean, millennials again started this, is that there's just like an emphasis on like mundane everyday life that you paint or make prints of or whatever. It's just like, you know, but I mean, it's done, it's done rather well in that like post-impressionist style self-portrait in bed as a bride this actually this one actually is probably has symbolic worth i don't know if she's married or if she was uh creates paintings which weave intricate and tender stories with themselves i mean they're discreet they're like they have their own life world they have their own story i mean this this is you know this is this is good um one of the challenges Gen Z, Gen Z artists uh, Dal, uh, said is the pressure to be a content creator. <laughs> yeah. Um, someone who can consistently produces photos and videos for de dedicated followers and social media. Um, if you think about artists in history who had huge bodies of work, they weren't making hundreds of paintings so they could give five minutes of instant gratification for likes online. Yeah, that's, that's a good, sorry, excuse me. That, that is a good critique. Oh my God, here we go. Um, they were painting and making to be able to experience, uh, grow and learn. Um, th the obsession, like I get it. Like the obsession with the POC body is like, 
you can do it but like a lot of them are not well done they they have like sort of uh it's like they're trying to appropriate Dega for like you know they're trying to decolonialize that style Cilio Felix Hernandez oh god I remember 1998 actually I feel old now um yeah I mean it's all right um it's not my it, it's it's a it's a good composition but I I know like it's just like the the I I think there's always a danger with taking like media depictions of your ethnicity and trying to like take them back or what's the word like trying to like counter discourse them because they can like this one artist that did this like ridiculous four panel murals about like stereotypes just got shredded on Twitter recently. Um, and I said, it was like, this is neoliberal kitsch to such an extent that it goes into parody, but this one, um, I've just, I mean, maybe it's because I'm too jaded. I've seen too many of them, you know, it's got the, uh, the medicine bowl. I mean, it's got some symbol. It's got, you know, the, is that an iguana? Um, Makes works that refer to the 2000s, the decade where they moved from Puerto Rico to Virginia. I saw a parallel between how both houses and my new house weren't truly mine. I uh, experienced displacement due to gentrification. Yeah, so there you go. That's um, the loss of one's own culture uh, through gentrification. I experienced displacement due to gentrification, the economic hardships my mother faces, a single mother of three. Moving around frequently, uh, Hernandez spent a lot of time their mother's uh, Honda Civic with a small yet proud Puerto Rican flag. Um, We'd all freak out, hey, oh boy. Yeah, I mean, that's like whenever my mother would see like a Brazilian flag from someone or like even like an Italian flag, though, it's like, yeah, I understand that feeling. Um, with traces and symbols of their Puerto Rican heritage, mimicking the border of the car flag, several of their canvases incorporate uh, fringed edges and color satin fabric they also use in performances. Uh, so like the materiality itself is also imbued into the painting uh, typical oil painting familiar icons some of them recurring motifs include high heels made from <laughs> plantains canes of uh, sugar cane juice long acrylic nails all-purpose surface cleaner fab fabuloso nude or partially clothed bodies um concern that artists their generation are not being taken seriously i wonder why um, they decide, uh, describe judgments that are passed, such as being deemed too young. Yeah, I mean, you are too young. You have to pay your dues. Possibly holding knowledge or contribution to ongoing dialogues. You're interested. Yeah, me, because you, you're not informed by the uh, the quote-unquote discourse. I mean, having known a lot of intelligent, like, 18-year-olds, um, I don't know. It's like they still lack something that keeps them grounded. Gen Z artists, however, community is a source of motivation. Community has, uh, that's, press X to doubt. Um, I tend to think that like, like are, are Gen Z people like more atomized than millennials or less? I don't know. That's kind of strange. Because like certain millennials, like millennial normies will like revert back to just their little towns or whatever. Um, this, this, I, okay, so. This was like iffy, like not my cup of tea, but it's still like pretty interesting. This stuff is mega interesting. I don't know if I can even show it on YouTube. Um, let's see, it's art. I'm pretty sure I can. Mozart, um, Palacios. So I'm. I hope I'm saying that. Born in 1999, man. 1999 was great. I remember 1999. Um, I don't remember everything of it, but it was like one of those. It was pretty good. I think I was like eight years old or something. Um, <laughs> Monserrat. Monserrat. I hope I'm saying this. But th this scene, um, you know what? Who cares if I get... I'm probably not going to get a strike, but like... the. I mean, it's a painting. It's artwork, you know. Um, this, the, the chaotic scene of an invaded domesticity by this um, creature, this woman, like playing with herself on it's very surreal you have masses of flesh everywhere you have this family in the background let me let me go to it um this naked family oh my god <laughs> um th this is such a chaotic it's a beautiful chaotic mess it's like if there was a few more like brown hues and dark tones this could probably be like a death metal cover 
Um, the the walls and the rooms and the masses of flesh are indistinguishable from each other. Uh, they're outlined, but this is very like almost Bacon esque, but more involved. Like this is more of the sort of uh, later expressionists that Bacon led the charge from. Uh, but like just the the sort of wallpaper, the natured wallpaper that you find um, in like a lot of lower class residences, like this, man, oh, this this really clings to you. Um, I like it. I like it. Uh, let, what's the description here? Hand sign included. Da, 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 da. Like like these ones, they're just like, wow, they're like mithras and they're, they're very like it's like if you were to take like visionary art and drive it to its like logical conclusions through the lens of like bacon and geiger like but it's got like that south american flair to it um it's got like that like the colors are more luscious they're more um they have almost like a leonora carrington type of vibe to it Oh my God, um, Rizzo. <laughs> like, oh man, this is death metal right here. Um, oh, the face is chopped off, and it's like this baroque. The, is it baroque? Like this room, it's got this like glare to it. It it almost reminds me of a lot of um, like religious art that like sort of the perennialist type of artist like some of the paintings like the the more represent like the more figurative paintings that mark toby did it reminds me a bit of the colors of like ruo and garagoshin and uh sorry garagoshin like the ah oh man or or like uh, hyman bluff like the that that painting has that vibe um this this is more illustrative i don't know if i can show this on youtube oh man this is crazy i think she's like my favorite out of all of these um other world oh so uh Montserrat. i love that name i hope i'm pronouncing it right otherworldly compositions include highly detailed grotesquely yet beautifully depicted depictions of cyborgs sea creatures machinery plants life other sci-fi inspired organisms uh the the artist color pencil drawings and paintings are rife with endless detail primarily drawn from memory wow so this is like visionary artist or surrealism this is like when um a young artist will like doodle stuff in the classroom. Like I had a friend that did this, but they're not like particularly serious about it. Like they're like, Oh, maybe you'll be a, a tattoo artist. But like this, this stuff is like real. I, I like this. How, how old are you when you're born in 1999, 20 years old? Um, 21. No, never mind. Never mind. Um, the artist, <laughs> I didn't, I didn't work through references from life or from photos. I don't create a picture. So, I mean, Francis Bacon did a bit of that too. Um, it was only one thing and had only one point of view. Memory is a fluid thing. It is not fixed. So this is combining the sort of older surrealist automatism. This is like a um, postmodern reintroduction of it. Um, her practice includes traditional pen, pencils, oil paint, as well as digital and bio art. Just as I think that there's a single word of art, but many, there is not single motivation to create art. Some artists are very political, socially committed, they do net art and hacktivism. Do Zoomers do hacktivism now? I don't know. They talk about techno power, bioethics, act, artivism, art, artivism. I guess maybe that's what they do. Um, others simply want to commodify their works and earn money. Oh, God. They're, they conversely do something that cannot be commodified. Yeah, I mean, this isn't going to win big in like the big galleries, but this is like, this is quality. This That, that creature reminds me of the... Uh, the gore what was it called the gorgon from star trek um so you have like this pregnant like humanoid with like the tendons ripped and exposed and you have the it reminds me of max ernst because max ernst used to paint these like coral like disfigured landscapes where these creatures have cordycepted themselves upon mountains um oh this is great i love it i love it um, she takes she takes the prize, that that and the queer South African, um, I mean queer artist. I'm not, please YouTube, please. I'm not making fun. Um, 
it's like a still life, but it's got that, it, it has like the themes of body horror, of things that are growing and teeming and exposing the innards. And it's got that like very like coral, like what's that term for where people are afraid of like different like holes? I've seen that same like crawling and teeming of natural fungal elements in like Biskinsky paintings, you know? Um, but it reminds me of a still, so there's like a demon there, but it's also like a still life of fruits. Um, the fruit of life is being sucked into this like amorphous demonic uh, veil of light, or rather is the demon getting drowned by the veil of light? Very interesting, very interesting. Um, it's almost <laughs> it's almost a prerequisite of Gen Zers to express acute awareness of the world at large. Quote, the challenges facing the generation are ecological and economic and therefore political and ethical. Her work is entrenched in understanding of these uh, image theory, communication theory, information theory, and generation uh, general systems theory. We face complex systems that require complex thinking. The challenge is not to lose ourselves in the face of a overwhelming load of activities. So I think like just going back to the mind itself and sort of the antipods of the mind in a way is like creating um, these like hideous monsters of geography and anthropology um, and the natural world itself, sorry, of ecology. Uh, there's a delicate balance that must be achieved when it comes to maturing as an artist for Palacios. This means uh, nurturing your interests while also pushing the boundaries. Uh, I believe that creativity, the best creativity is never born from comfort zones. It's never born without a previous struggle, without resistance. Yeah, that's true. Seni Ra uh, Ralkov. Yeah. Signy? Seni? 1997. Oh, man, that's terrifying. <laughs> that's, a, that's pretty terrifying. Milky smile. Um, when I was little, I was always come around after a trip with a pocket. Pockets heavy with stones and whatever stuff I would stumble upon. Now I'm a hoarder of images, um, collects photographs, both found images in her own short uh, shots and draws inspiration from them. In Danish, the verb for developing images, uh, frem kalde, which translates to calling forth. That's very, <laughs> that's very Heideggerian, actually. It's, it's very different from Roland Barthes, like the placing, the camera lucida, like the placing of an image and the image space being a like a weird creation a snapshot in time but rather the image is called forth from or rather called forth to like you are creating that space for an image um what what medium is this oh colored pencils yeah i notice a lot of like younger artists they do the colored pencil things because it gives them like um the benefits of like painting color theory but also like details like drawing um which is like a plus and a minus, like, honestly, like it's a mixed bag. I mean, I I'm pretty loose when it comes to like my pen and on tone paper and, and different uh, pastels and stuff. Uh, and, and I find that very illustrative the way I think about drawing, recognizing shapes and pixels and putting them onto paper, drawing upon the swamp of imagery that resides in my brain. Uh, it's almost like too photorealist. So when she's mentioning like putting pixels down, that means like she's obviously gritting it out and like doing it. Um, Rolkov's work is almost exclusively in blue. Um, currently executed in blue. Currently enrolled in the Royal Danish Fine Arts. Um, blue drawing is practiced for over six years. She primarily uses color pencils to compose pieces that consider the fluidity between humans, nature, and data systems. In her work, lakes, stones, plants, places are seen as alive and sometimes given a body. She's influenced by folktales. So this is like animist folktales and myths. Um, it's like, I don't know, it's surprising that Zoomers are willing to like appropriate mythology, which is quite interesting. Um, I just, I don't know, it's too tight, in my opinion. It's like too, it's got, of course, it's got that like, you know, Northern European um, obsession with detail. Uh, like the execution of it this is why I tend to eschew color pencils because the execution always comes out as being very tight and very controlled um, and almost too controlled and too focused. Embryo is pretty good, actually. This one's pretty good. Um, really? Crabs? Crustaceans? That's pretty good, actually. Lo uh, is that a lobster? Shrimp? 
Um, engages with questions of non-human agency. She uses snapshots from her daily life, combined with found imagery, morphing the mundane uh, with streams of images she consumes. Um, light and shadow and time, yeah. Okay, moving on. I, I mean, it's it's got a sense of naturalism to it, but it's just uh, not my cup of tea. Um, although working in monochrome, it does those self-imposed limitations can obviously bring something good. Um, there's a lot of water surrounding data cooling. Yeah. The, the internet's like an ocean. Remember that cooling the servers of the server farms around the fiber optic cables and the seabeds. I like to speculate about these streams of images and how they mutate in bodies of water and form new life forms on their own. Kind of like memes that mutate in the wa- bodies of water. That is the internet. The internet is not a space. It's not like outer space. It's more of an ocean as, Zero HP Lovecraft says. I love that city is surrounded by waters. Um, on warm days, I work my school. A blessing and a curse. She ultimately views it as a net positive, especially for Gen Zers, uh, social media, who have learned to use it in their favor. <laughs> oh, uh, well, only time will tell. I kind of press X to doubt on that one. Megan Dominescu. Dominescu. Netherlands, um, oh God, <laughs> oh man, Salon de Masquerotic. Wow, this is like kind of like raunchy, the, like the raunchier, more like lowbrow art or like um, pop to lowbrow art. Megan Domescu studied paintings at the Bucharest um, National University of Arts, yet she's since shifted her focus on textiles from life side, uh, life-size crocheted figures to rug hooked scenes of whimsical and alien subjects dominus skews work mingles difficult subject matters with light-hearted imagery she uses humor to convey the hardships people face and the absurdity of the world we inhabit a message girl one dominus skew designs a large eye-popping rug in the style of classic sex ad confidential mask erotic massage erotic it reads at the top with a photo number to call at the bottom Bubbles texting nonstop, 100% real. Oh, so this is like one of those like ads you used to see. Like I remember um, I had friends that used to call those lines just as a joke. And they'd obviously ask you to pay, but it's like, oh my God. Like this is like um, that like, yeah, that like lowbrow type of art. Um, adding comical shock value to messages around sex. Um, com- oh man, damn. Sometimes I feel like all my works are part of one big series, although some may seem unrelated. Calls her subjects at random and finds them in unexpected places. My work has always been very intu- intru- um, intuitive for me, and it doesn't question. I don't question myself much before creating something. Living in Bucharest, her ex- exposed Dominique Dominescu to small yet vibrant art scene. Although I don't have a large art community, we are close knit. Quality runs higher than quantity. Um, I can already see Romanian artists are being more and more appreciated in Europe and throughout the rest of the world. Culture, I believe cultural exchange and communication is the key to getting artists known. I feel like Gen Zers are much more progressive. Oh, I wonder why. Um, much more progressive in their works and search for ways to explore new media and look to the future, not in the past. Yeah, I don't know. But yet their future, like their ideal future is basically like an eternal present that was set up for them by millennials. So, uh, oh, wow. <laughs> okay, this is kind of ridiculous to me. Omar Gaber, um, Cairo, 1999. Um, I love how they, they like, the contemporary world has, like, plucked the, uh, like, various Arab countries and, like, found the most, like, openly, um, you know, global American empire subjects, if you know what I mean. Uh, to like display. Oh man, they're they're like apart from just the obvious like political messaging, um, you know, cross dressing so forth. They are like well executed. Um, in Omar Gaber's funny effects series, humor mixes with absurd to express the perplexing qualities of the human condition. Bodies of tigers and shrimp have human faces, so there's a lot of um emphasis on like that manichaean like chimerism 
Uh, bodies of tigers uh, have human faces, while odd assortments of items are frequently rendered in disjointed harmony. Yeah, this is, this is kind of... It's kind of interesting. There's a lot of 80s painters that did the sort of uh, wild arrangements of different things. It's It's kind of... It, I mean, it's general expressionism, but it just, it, it borders on pop art. Um, yeah. Um, experiments with skill and subject matter, though his compositions are rooted in reality, he aims to make art that focuses on people, politics, oh, of course, issues plaguing society. Oh, how did I know that one? Home city of Cairo, uh, local art communities have been an indelible impact on his art practice. Other artists have influenced me and enabled me to avoid repetition um la lakta arab for the shot joined the art collective and has since taken a more academic approach to creating art allowed me to share my work with different artists uh, da, 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 da. i like these ones these are good um the ubuntu art gallery uh they, they're like sort of that raw expressionism of like an egon shayla being an artist in Egypt, Gabor has been witnessing experience difficulties uh, unique to his generation. Gen Z in Egypt is quite a confused generation because he's gone through several evolutions, <clears throat> funded by the CIA, <clears throat> um, and experienced political and economic unrest. He's critical of public education afforded to people in Egypt, censorship that artists face. He knows that galleries and government backed exhibitions are reluctant to accept contemporary works. Um, a few of their neighbors actually would not tolerate this, but. Say love you. Um, the biggest challenge Gen Z is continually continuing longevity and honesty, especially in light of pressure that many artists face from those in positions of power and authority in the art world. While these challenges can pose significant obstacles to emerging artists, um, Gab Gabir ultimately believes these conditions can be motivating. Blah, blah, blah. My Ta, 1997, Ho Chi Minh City. Oh, they call that's what they call um, what do they call it? Saigon. Um, I could be wrong about that. Uh, my ta, uh, these like, they're kind of like the post impressionist, like exoticist works of specifically Gauguin and then Dega. Like it's, um, it's, it's got that sort of that flatness. I get what it's trying to do. It's very much an ethnographic exploration of one's own subjectivity in that particular culture um, with a sort of fauvist lack of the, the, the sort of fauvist simplicity of the color field. Um, the blue house, the blue house is pretty nice. Um, uh, school and visual in art school. I was influenced by a lot of my professors that helps. Oh, so there you go. I was right. Um, specific visions for what they wanted my art to look like. Um, everything sort of changed for me after graduation, uh, bold canvases delved into difficult personal subject matter. I was approaching art in a way that was very much based on how I want people to perceive me, to think of me. Uh, that's kind of, that's always a mixed bag. Like, because the art for art's sake or art expression, I'm sorry, art expression it can become very like daunting or it can become sort of like um, a semantic game that you're playing with yourself in terms of this is how I want the world to perceive me. But it's like the nature of art is inherently multi-perspectival and you don't know how the audience is going to interpret it. I mean, it's always that push and pull. It's more for me now. It's not for anyone. Her current work is more um, meditative, focused, minimal, expressing her inner self. Uses a muted color palette to enhance the cerebral qualities of her paintings. So yeah, fauvism. What centers on a single female subject or representative of herself. Everything is kind of self-portrait. Um, I'm skeptical myself of like exclusive self-portraits. But the way I approach it changes every time, every era. Yet Todd does not see the world as the beginning and ending with herself. I'm very much interested in how people perceive my work nowadays. Um, how people feel about it, what people take from it. It's more important than what I'm trying to say. Um, except, especially prominent motif, regularly when I go into art. Start looking at Vietnamese culture and Vietnamese women. I start to realize... Um, 
our, our hair holds as much spiritual power. She says, there was a period where Ta used the motifs of cutting hair to symbolize change in her most recent works. She depicts long veils of black hair to evoke mystery and strength. So it's like, um, a, like a more sardonic take would be like, well, it's exoticism is all right when they do it. But no, I generally think that um, hair does have a powerful symbolism within Vietnamese culture. And I think that... Um, it's kind of like almost like pop art. -y. Like, yeah, it's like an 80s New York type of vibe, but less not crazy. Yeah, it's not as, um, it's like fauvism viewed through the lens of pop art posters in particular. Like, um, who am I thinking of? Lichtenstein or Leindecker. Um, it's like, yeah, like this one, uh, She Bloomed in the Dead of Night. I think I saw this before. Um, with like the uh the sacrificial uh ox the 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 water buffalo i really like this one there is like a mystery and an intrigue and she is um connected to the primordial there there is uh in very minimal subject matter there is expression um especially her eyes like they're very um they have that sort of exoticist gaze and the lips like just have that like subtle hint of illumination um uh let's see here is an especially prominent motif um david i'm not even going to attempt that uh austria us och um yeah just i i'm sorry i butchered that so this is like photo work, um, recent exhibition, Mar Monstrum, Down in My Magic. Uh, they perceived a series of enigmatic photographs of black merfolk. Black merfolk? Human bodies with thin scales, tail folk. Oh, God. Oh, that hit me out of the blue. This is the, uh, the animist. What do they call those? Uh, other kin people. Um color ship eyes of water moments of pain violence are conveyed through gestures of support and embrace oh this is so i mean they're saying the 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 quiet part out loud like the sort of androgynous chimeric relationship between like the which was in mythology by the way um especially like bataille would talk about the eroticism of greek mythos or the sort of hellenization of eroticism where you have this sort of like bestial animality being taking on this chimeric form with the human and through it there's like this primordial eroticism that has arrived and here you get like modern like notions of uh you know other kin and so forth there's a lot of like deviant art stuff where they make like hyper realistic um, human forms in the shape of animals. It's like really disturbing and creepy. Um, human bodies with fin scales and tails surrounding color shifting bodies of water. Moments of pain and violence. So this this is like photo editing. Um, so it's like pain and violence and su support embrace. So that's like the duality of the erotic experiences that. There is embrace, but there's also a, a violence done to the subject. And the violence can also be through this like post-human uh, critical, like animal studies type of like challenging of the human through animality. So this is like all the rage and like a lot of theory cell literary departments and so forth. Um, the works are grounded in us ochuku. Oh, I can't pronounce it examination of relationship between and it's not i don't mean that to be offensive i mean that it's just um who's ochukwu i'm i'm trying i'm not i'm not i'm not joking uh examinations relationship but again like anything you say to a person of color is offensive nowadays so whatever um <laughs> relationship between african diaspora and water yeah like that is so, oh my god i was reading this artnet article where like the whole like zombie figuration thing where these like woke tards are like going back to like figuration and art and how um 
the theme of like water and the African continent and the middle passage in America. And there's like the water is the bringer of subjugation, but also like the harbinger of the spirit. Like, I mean, there is a lot of archetypal significance there, but I'm just suspicious when the woke people do this. I mean, there's, (laughs) I mean, I don't mean to diminish it, but it's just like Gen Z artists, like just, reading some prompt in university about the relationship between water and the African American, the African uh, POC body. It's like, you know, um, the works are grounded in examination relationship between African despair and water. Uh, So the water has carried them off from the mother of the African continent. Uh, The othering of (laughs) othering um, black individuals and communities and the politics of modern day migration. Um, I'm sorry, but you gotta go back. No, I'm kidding. I'm, I'm only half. I'm only half kidding. Um, mythical themes permeate, but but why can't you? I don't know. Like this is just an appropriation of like Hellenistic mythos. This is like Sanford Biggers in America. This is like, um, like, I'm sure there's probably some African mythos going on in some of his works, but or they they them works. I don't know. I often say that my work is about longing and belonging uh, through images. How do I fit into my environment? How do the human fit in the environment? Um, This is why mass migration is bad because the aesthetics of it produce these weird chimeras and it cheapens the relationship of the migrant to their own culture, unironically. Like it is the reliance on the appropriation of the quote unquote dominators uh, or settlers culture is sort of, I don't know. It's like there, you can only go so far with it. And like, it seems that every like woke tart in the art world is doing that. Um, with a focus on black subjects and people of color, we reimagine preconceived shapes of black bodies. How can we reclaim monstrosity? They ask that I think is something kind of inherent to blackness, reclaiming some violent category. Um, well, wow. That, that again is like another theme of like the abjected uh, horror of like, I don't know, for example, the black criminal is being reclaimed now. Begin photography career 13 has created surreal images of uh, past seven years. Significant amount of energy goes into the editing process, though they become more ambitious. It's become much more efficient. Uh, well, I don't know. So we got a little NOS up next. I'm sorry, not a little NOS. Uh, I feel like there's a big awareness of the responsibility that one has in putting. By the way, go to Break the Rules. We did a whole little last episode and that music video that came out. Uh, reflecting on prominent role of the eth- ethics that ethics play in young artists' works. They believe young artists need time and space to develop their practice, but shouldn't feel pressure to continue putting out new work. I'm not sure you should uh, always be sharing. Yeah, I mean, a lot of artists I know, they say this, that like, there's some stuff that you shouldn't share, but me, I'm of the mindset that um, I like to share the process leading up to something. So, uh, I mean, like all of this stuff, like as much as it's not my cup of tea, I, I would demerit points because it's not like photo editing, using filters to become like classical realist paintings to me is like, I mean, I, people know I have an inherent skepticism of digital art, but I, it is what it is. Um, Trinity, Trinity Thomas, New Orleans, born in 1999. Man, I love, if I could go back, if only I could go back. Um, so this is photograph, photography. Um, the heat. That could be like a mixtape. Uh, that could be like a good like album cover. Uh, has been surrounded. I don't. I shouldn't have said mixed. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm not trying to make any racial commentary. Um, has surround been surrounded by art from an early age. Uh, his mother. Okay, so I can use his. Also, an artist enrolled him in art program in second grade. Gave him first camera in 2015. Almost immediately after exper- experimenting with his new equipment, he was hooked. He started off as a painter, continues to paint. Yeah, I noticed like the color palette is very similar to the way a painter would approach a good subject. So that is like, I think all photographers should at least have some background in painting. I mean, art photographers. 
New Orleans based artist now focuses on capturing people of a city. So, I mean, it's funny because like Boris Groys had this article about like where does where does like art in terms of like the pure work of art begin and the sort of where does it end and where does art cartography begin which is using the work of art to categorize and to produce this cartography this sort of archiving of subjectivity of subject matters of locations of peoples um and if there's like this inherent link between the work of art and various aims of, for example, anthropological photography, or like, um, what would you call it? like citizen documentarian, uh, like, like people doing this sort of guerrilla art documenting. Um, like, for example, that channel on YouTube, Software Underbelly, you could say that like, uh, there's some artistic flair to it. There's a unique aesthetic there's an emphasis on the sort of lower dregs of society in all its forms. But here it's like uh, the unique characters of New Orleans and sort of the economically devastated parts of the South. Um, now, uh, the New Orleans based artist now focuses on capturing the people of a city, draws inspiration from friends and family, as well as films, particularly that of renowned cinematographer Roger Dinkins. Well, there you go. Um, Thomas especially loves photo photographing people who aren't models. He believes that camera brings out the true potential and true beauty of who they really are. Um, and that is also a debate whether you're staging it, whether like the camera lucidia, like it, if, if it, they have a specific word for it, but it's like the framing of the subject in, in photography whereabouts. So this is like a very good, I like this photo. It's almost like a classic, like, um, you know, spiffy African-American man, you'd almost see like in a jazz uh, bar of yore next to like the Southern style, like train yard, you know, in the economically devastated South with a, uh, what's that thing called? The, the Joe, Fr not Joe Frank. Uh, it's like that particular style of, uh, I like to tell a story through an image of vision instead of words. I say, I have a guy that looks like a detective, but he's holding a big doll. I want people to think what is going on about this image. Um, which young man in a bowler hat and trench coat holds a large red and white striped stuffed monkey? Uh, <laughs> no, I'm not gonna. Um, sorry, I'm just some like ridiculous 4chan memeing, whatever. Um, the image explicitly may, may question many, uh, explicates many questions. Thomas's skill with lighting, composition, post-production editing. With many friends who are also young artists, Thomas has found a supportive community in New Orleans, uh, work together, blah, blah, blah. So this is the end, and now I'm going to switch over to the uh, other one. So let's go.